Okay, class. Today we'll look at uh, a plain stress problem, which is a thin plate. Uh, so, if it's a thin, thin plate problem, we can a uh, three D problem can be transformed into a two D problem, which significantly reduce the computational cost. Okay, so the problem here is is a combination range, which is geometry are given. Uh, the boundary condition applied is so on one side there's uh, pressure applied on top of it so normal to the surface and a fixed boundary condition is applied on the hexagon okay the thickness of the plate the three uh, millimeter uh, material used a stainless steel okay with the problem here we'll go into workbench okay now we open workbench here we will create a new one. The project we'll use is a static structure. Static structural project. Uh, here we'll first go into engineer data. Double click on engineer data. And here we'll create uh, a new material. Let's call it stainless, stainless steel for chapter 4 okay and then to define some material property we assume this is a linear elastic isotropic material so we choose isotropic double click on it where we can define Young's modulus which is 1.93 10 to 11 enter the next parameter we'll input is a Poisson's ratio based on the problem description uh, point 27 is given so uh, remember that if you use the stainless steel in the material uh, library and the Poisson ratio here is 0.31 so uh, that's why here I, I will use the uh, user defined stainless steel enter okay so once the material is defined I close the engineering data and then I will go to geometry, make sure that geometry, click on geometry, there should be a, the panel opened uh, on the right side. So if not, so you can right click and choose property and also show up. Here, because this is a 2D problem and we need to change the setup, see there, there's an analysis type, change this to 2D. So. That's that's very important, very essential for this problem. Make sure that it's 2D is chosen. After that, double click on geometry, which will open space claim where we'll add it uh, a geometry for the combination range. Okay, take a few seconds, but make sure that before you're doing that, you have choose you have chosen. 2d type so now here we are we are in space claim by default this millimeter unit is used so we don't need to go into the space claim options okay so uh, now first we will draw the geometry on 2d dimension so i will select a new sketch plane after that i will choose xy by default so you will see that you change the location of the cursor, it will go to different plane. Here's a plane I want to choose, so uh, left click. Well, after left click, the plane has been chosen, and then I will use the plan view. Now, uh, go into the 2D. So I've started the sketch, so I will use sketch mode and then line. So I've start from where bottom I will draw a line from the origin of the coordinate to the right uh, with the length is a 40 meter 40, 40 millimeter so 40 millimeter okay and then I will draw the top line the line on top the same the same line on top okay if I want to draw a line I know that I need to go up by uh, 12 millimeter so to help us to draw a line on top with 12 millimeter gap so you can go to the sketch option 
okay and then find Cartesian dimensions which can help us can help us find the location we want to draw the line okay click Cartesian dimension and then you choose origin of the Cartesian and then go up by 12 millimeter and then click now we at this point this is a point we where where we can start uh, sketch a line okay now we can sketch the line start from there and go exactly 40 millimeter and click now we have two lines okay once we have two lines I will uh, choose a new sketch mode I will go to three point arc and we'll draw the arc on the two side I choose three see this one again three point arc okay so we choose one point of the arc another point of the arc and then I will stretch around there to get the proper diameter and here's the radius the radius of the arc is the radius of the arc let's see is 10 okay let's choose let's choose 10 okay I will draw 10 okay now the one arc has been created and then I will create the second one choose one point choose another point and then move around and for this one the diameter is 12.5 I will increase 12.5 the enter okay the other arc has been created all right now the next one is I want to choose a hexagon which will be sketched on the right side okay now once you pick it you can choose the center of the hexagon okay and then choose the angle the orientation here I will use 30 degree with diameter, let's see the diameter uh, is 12. Okay, so if you look at that, 30 degree, 30 degree and 12. All right, here we are. We get this hexagon. Okay. All right, and then. Next one is we'll draw. There's a small. Uh, there's a dent into the uh, into the, this arc. So if you look at geometry to do that, well, I still will use. A, I need to draw a line. I was, first I want to draw a line along this side. So I will start from here and go up. Let's see, six meter, six millimeter. So from the center of the arc, I go up six millimeter. Okay, that's good. And then go to the left side, all the way to the uh, arc, click. Okay, and then we can do the same thing, but go to go down by six millimeter again to the arc. All right, and then now we have this geometry but still there is a, a small arc we don't want we don't want so to trim it down so you can go to uh, let's see go to this trim away click on it and click this arc and this is gone okay so um, one more thing before we leave we finish the drawing is the corner Okay, if you look at the, the this two corner, this corner is a rounded corner. I will generate a rounded co corner by choose create a rounded corner function. What I do is click on one side and then move to the other side. And then I will input the corner radius 2.5 enter. Okay, and then we'll see the generator 5 millimeter. It show that this is a, a 
uh, diameter. Diameter five meter reduces to 0.5. So that's right. So and then we'll generate the same thing, the same round corner on this side. And here I uh, will input 2.5 again. Enter. Okay. So now we have uh, the sketch has finished. And the next one is we'll make sure that is uh, we will look at in in home mode. So because right now it's all curves, so all the lines. We want to generate a surface. So when you click a mode, it will automatically generate a surface. Okay. But this surface we want trim this hexagon so you click on it and then press delete on the your keyboard click and then delete it doesn't work okay then you can right click and then delete all right and then after that mm, well don't pull again don't pull it out as a 3d dimension because we simplify the problem from 3d to do 2d but the i still want to know that what the thickness of the surface uh, okay so we click on the surface and go into the property panel go all the way down there's a mid surface thickness so here input three input three millimeter which is the thickness okay so now that we finished our drawing and again don't use a pole to pull into 3d if you pull into 3d and well essence will report error when you launch the mechanical surface app uh, mechanical uh, modeling okay so let's stop here and save so you can name it Let's name it a design two, okay, and then save, and then we'll close space claim, go to model, double click model, lead us to mechanical modeler, again don't, so we need the geometry editor, don't pull into a 3D, if you pull into 3D, and you when you try to uh, open model, open the mechanical model, it won't work. It, it report error said that this is uh, your geometry 3D, but the simulation you want to do is 2D, doesn't work. We, we didn't, we just tell essence the thickness without pulled into a 3D. Okay, take a few seconds to load geometry oh right now we are in geometry the first thing is to do is to click on geometry and to define the 2d behavior here there's a many options you can do you can choose plane stress which is the one we want to do and there are other options okay so make sure that plane stress has been chosen after that, go click on system surface and choose material. The material we want to use is stainless steel and C2, this is a material we define. Okay, after that, go to mesh. So mesh here, I will insert mesh method. So click on automatic method, select geometry choose the whole body apply and here you will see that there's a method you can choose you can choose the triangles you can choose quadral or and triangles or you can choose quadrilateral dominant let's use the default quadrilateral dominant and element order you can use a linear or quadratic or you can use a global setting means that is the, uh, the computer will help us to de uh, determine which is better okay so and for the free face mesh type is a quadral triangle uh, quadratic and triangle quadratic triangle okay and then uh, that's pretty much for 
the automatic method. Okay, and then we can also insert the sizing. So there's some more details that we can choose. Again, choose the body, apply. And here you can choose the element size. Here the element size I choose is, let's use one because this is 2D. Well, you can make the size smaller. Okay, after that, and then you can ins uh, you can generate a mesh. Okay, the mesh has generated. If you look at the mesh, it looks pretty good. Uh, and then we can go to static structure to insert bottom condition. So first fixed fixed the hexagon. So here we use edge to choose one, two, three, four, five, six, six sides of the hexagon. So make sure the six edges have been selected if you look at the bottom and then click apply. See six edge has been applied. Uh, the next boundary condition is to apply pressure and then choose pressure and then you can choose the edge and then apply and you can choose magnitude here the magnitude is 2 uh, 2 megapascal so note that that so I'm using I'm using millimeter kilometer uh, I'm using this matrix so by this matrix the mag uh, pressure unit is uh, amp ampa. So you can if you use others, then you need to change the value uh, accordingly. So once we have fixed support pressure, and then we can insert the deformation. This output will choose to do uh, deformation, and we'll also choose uh, stress for it. And after that, then you can solve. Uh, well, take a few seconds to do the calculation. Okay, after that, you can check the total deformation. And you can also check the equivalent stresses, which is a, a warm mysis stress. And make it smaller. Okay. And then you can look at that video and you can tell that the maximum stress uh, shows up as a corner here, around here. Okay, and we have obtained our result. I want to look at this deformation video again. The maximum deformation shows up at the end, left end. And that's what we have for this video. I will stop here.